Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I'm so happy to meet you again in this very interesting product. What you can do if you face a patient, hypotensive, choked, with wet lung and O2 desaturation, hypoxic, respiratory distress, and you cannot measure wage pressure, you cannot do leg rising test, you cannot watch left ventricular outflow tract VTI. What can you do in this situation? Really, it is very, very interesting case with a lot of lessons. Let us see. A 47 years old male patient, ex-smoker, ex-alcoholic, who has long history of dyspnea on exertion and the cuff, who related to cigarette smoking. Two weeks ago, he complained of flu symptoms, fever, productive cough, and dyspnea. He thought medical advice and received antibiotic and analgesia. Seven days later, after receiving the antibiotic and analgesia, he complained of abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and noticed that urine like a tea with yellow discoloration of the sclera. He stayed for two days. He presented to our, uh, our station room after two days because of not yellow discoloration of the sclera, because of severe shots of breath. He was <coughs> conscious, oriented, obeying command, hemodynamically unstable. On 15 mic per minute, noradrenaline, blood pressure was 90 over 60, heart rate, sinus, 110 per minute. He was tachypneic in respiratory stress with a respiratory rate 40 per minute, ABG, BH 7.05, BCO2 34, BO2 70 millimeter mercury, bicarb 9 millimole per liter, O2 saturation 95, on 15 liter non replacing mass, serum lactate horrible, 14 millimole per liter. So he has severe metabolic acidosis with bad compensation and respiratory and hypoxia. So he has mixed metabolic and respiratory acidosis and severe hypoxia. Chest examination, bilateral crackles, lung x ray, wet, heart, S1, S2, abdomen, hepato, splenomegaly. <clears throat> so to sum up, patient with long history of cigarette smoking and the cough. He developed 10 days back a flu-like illness. He received antibiotic. Seven days after antibiotic and analgesia, he uh, complained of jaundice, the yellow scourge of sclera and the T-urine. Two days after, he developed severe shock to press and presented our ICU here, the resuscitation room here in uh, our hostel. Hypotensive, hypoxic, and uh, in bad acidosis with chest cracking, with chest. CBC, there is leukocytosis, apart from that normal. Chemistry, sky high liver enzymes, above, thousand, above 2000 ALT, above 1500 ACT. Alkali phosphate is mildly elevated. CK, sky high, more than 9000. CK, maybe 125. Bilirubin is high with mixed. Direct and indirect, both high. Serum album is normal. <clears throat> mild derangement of renal function. Serum creatinine 115, mild impairment. Urea 13, mild impairment. Serum electrolytes normal, apart from serum potassium 5.9. All are normal, uh, serum light or are normal. Random blood sugar on low side 60 milligram per deciliter. INR above 7, VTT high, troponin mild increase, x ray chest bilateral infiltrate. Okay, this patient who developed jaundice <clears throat> and T urine after seven days of antibiotic and the flu like illness, chemistry revealed multiple organ dysfunction, <clears throat> mainly the liver, with INR7, shooting liver enzyme, shooting bilirubin, mild renal impairment, shooting CBK, and X ray revealing infiltrate. Multiple organ dysfunction and in the core of the organ dysfunction is acute liver injury 10 days after flu and antibiotic treatment. So, the differential diagnosis we think about drug induced liver injury of antibiotic or analgesia. He denied any alcohol, <clears throat> herbal intake, all toxicology and the virology screen were sent. And the higher center was contacted for possible liver transplant due to acute hepatic injury. In this very bad acidosis we, and hyperkalemia, potassium on the higher side, we give 200 millimole sodium bicarb, 
we give 10 uh, cc D50 D25 to correct hypoglycemia and started infusion D5 uh, isotonic sodium bicarb to guard against hypoglycemia and uh, hyperkalemia of acidosis. Patient was giving six unit fresh frozen plasma because of high IMR, vitamin K, and started non invasive CBAP pressure support, 7 BEEP, 10 pressure support. Okay. Very critical patient. Probably he need to, to be transferred to higher center with the facilities of uh, a liver transplant for this acute hepatic insult with multiple organ dysfunction. But at this moment, we need to do thing for this patient. Advanced critical ultrasound start for this patient, and in this patient, you need whole body ultrasound because every organ can be affected, and you should investigate and explore every organ in this patient. First, as you all of you know now, in fear vena cava, dilated, <clears throat> non collapsing, this patient is full or in failure. Second, the heart, surprisingly, this is what we found in the heart of the patient. Very bad myxoma attached to the interatrial septum, prolapsing and obstructing the mitral valve with biventricular failure, dilated right side. This is para long axis para sternal view. You see here, very weak left ventricle, dilated right ventricle, very bad myxoma. Let us see other view. Four chamber view, dilated right side, right atria, right ventricle, bore tapsy, prolapsing, huge myxoma occupying all the left atria, weak, small left ventricle. This is this bad myxoma causing obstruction and dirigerge. It not it didn't allow the mitral valve to cohabitate properly, so there is moderate regurge. There is stenosis and dirigerge. What can you do in this horrible situation? This is big vessel, short axis view, barasthenal short axis view, aorta, left atrium, occupied almost totally by myxoma, right atrium, aorta, and outflow, right into outflow time. <clears throat> Subcostal view revealing huge <coughs> left atrial myxoma. So it's a horrible situation. The patient now is hypotensive on 15 mic levofat with blood pressure 90 over 60. He is hypotensive, he's shocked, and he has very bad myxoma. And he is hypoxic with wet lung. What are you going to do? Usually, in this cardiac patient with wet lung, I go directly to the mitral valve tips to assess the dysfunction function and feeling pressure. I went there. It was horrible. You see, this is the mitral valve flow. It's myxoma flow. Very bad signal from myxoma. Impossible to get any finding for assessment of the diastolic function for this patient. You lose the control over diastolic, diastolic assessment in this patient completely. You cannot know anything about E over E prime. You cannot know anything about left atrial volume. Horrible situation. What can I do? This is a tapsy, bad tapsy, trichasmic regurg. The only parameter appear here is a trichasmic regurg. And I assessed the right atrial volume because this is the only chamber I can accurately assess in this patient. Moreover, I tried to get any idea about LVOT, VTI, to look for the stroke volume of the patient and to try to do leg raising test to know if this patient hypoperfuse need fluids, it is horrible. Myxoma interfere with the measurement of LVOT, VTI. So we lose all control and we lose all objective measurement over management of this patient. 
What can you do? Your patient has wet lung, white lung, and shock. What are you going to do? Fluids or Lasix? Fluids or Frosimide? To give fluids or not? Really, in this situation, it's very difficult. It's impossible. But it's very important questions to answer because this piece of management is very important. This patient has, you can consider myxoma causing severe mitral stenosis and the moderate mitral regurg. So, there is a pulmonary congestion element very important to clarify here because it could be the result of this deteriorating hypoxia and very bad ABG for this patient. Okay. For cardiology people, I need your comment if you face this patient, fluids or frosimide. So, for cardiology people, please go to the lung. It will help you a lot. We went to the lung. We found this in the upper loops. Very bad, dense P line with no subpleural consolidation denoting the element of congestion. But lower down, we found another P-line subpleural consolidation here denoting the infection. Moreover, we found in the left lower loop consolidation, pure consolidation here, hepatization, lung like a tissue with white dots moving, air bronchogram denoting consolidation. So, this unfortunate patient has still chest infection going on and pulmonary congestion due to this bad myxoma and the hypoxic effect of pneumonia on the heart. We should look for this liver to know if there is, because the patient has a history of alcohol, we, ne we need to assess if there is any cirrhosis or not. Patient is bright liver, has bright liver, but no cirrhosis. His hepatomegaly bright liver, but no cirrhosis, very smooth surface. Ascites, there is not dilated common bile duct, so it is hepatic jaundice and no obstruction of the portal vein, the flow of the blood from portal vein, there is flow on the blood here. Fifth, the kidney, so vital organ assessment in these patients is very important because I find now, I found now, but more congestion. So, I, I, I'll start to, to think about giving diuretics and the patient's hypotensive. I need to look for the perfusion of the vital organ because this is my target in hemodynamic management in any patient. This is a systolic velocity, this is a diastolic velocity and RI here is 0.67 which is normal. So this patient kidney is perfused. Six the brain. This patient with acute hepatic insult, he is conscious, cooperative, but I need to check for brain edema. It's very important in this patient. I check optic nerve sheet diameter. The diameter is 0.54, which is not increased. I will consider, consider increase from above 0.58. And the patient is conscious already. Fitting the puzzle together, huge myxoma, biventricular failure, mitral regurge, moderate tricuspid regurge, pulmonary hypertension. Patient is hypotensive and hypoxic with two types of PLI, B lines with subpleural consolidation and the basal consolidation denoting infection, and the B line without subpleural consolidation denoting congestion. You cannot measure left ventricular feeling pressure because of huge myxoma. You cannot assess LVOT, VTI. You cannot I do raise, leg raising tests because interference of myxoma with LV OT VTI, you only have the lung window to the side. Liver injury is acute without if there's cirrhosis. RI is normal. Kidney is perfused. Good news. Optic nerve sheet diameter is normal for this patient. No brain edema. Case was discussed with cardiology team. You, nothing you can decide on objective basis. You have wet lung and you have pneumonia. What is going on on objective basis? You cannot decide in this patient because of huge myxoma and the impossible to do diastolic function for this patient or the fluid responsive, 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 <laughs> fluid responsive test, fluid responsive test like uh, leg raising test because of interference of LVOT VTI by myxoma. So 
we can neither assess the soil function nor do nor do leg raising and the only evidence of pulmonary congestion was the cardiogenic p lines and at the end we started prothemide patient was giving prothemide 5 mg iv infusion for 24 hours with negative balance of 3 liter antibiotic was added because of consolidation after sending culture next day patient improved significantly significantly thanks to god with no respiratory stress with drop of oxygen requirement and the drop of liver enzyme cbk noradrenaline dropped to five mic per minute serum like that dropped to six millimole per liter so probably here decongested this patient deluding this patient removing the cardiogenic improving the cardiogenic element of pulmonary edema of this patient helped a lot and it was really a factor in this patient so abg improved b 87.43 bco2 dropped to, to uh, 25 because the patient can know can now wash properly of co2 bo2 improved bicarb improved o2 saturation 97 on three liter nasal cannula so we attack a very important point in management of this patient okay repeat critical kill ultrasound in this patient <clears throat> this is the upper loops you see faint b line all the dense cartogenic b line disappear and this is the real life this is the and i believe it should be a lasix test lasix response test for these tricky cases because you can find the result immediately okay you see very faint B line compared to the density B line day before. <clears throat> very faint B line. Um, the, the B line due to infection, subpleural consolidation here, dirty blue pleura here. You will you will never uh, see it disappear with lasix. It will never disappear immediately with lasix because it is exudate. The other lines are transudate, dependent on the pressure and uh, diffusion. Here, very <clears throat> good image in the same part of the lung. You see, here is density B line, here is appearance of B line. Converting the patient from this state to this state by CBAP and prothemite, you correct oxygenation, you washed BCO2, you improved the pH. You improve the hemodynamic of the patient because really you attack one of important point which lead to deterioration of this patient besides other point which is acute hepatic damage and the pneumonia. But in this patient, never you can take the decision solely on echocardiographic assessment. Because of that, I advise all cardiology people to have an idea about critical care ultrasound, including a lung ultrasound, because really you are the people who can lead this piece of management, which is a critical care ultrasound, because you are very familiar of uh, phaser ray probe. <clears throat> I measured again in the right the right atrial this is not left this is the right atrial volume which decreased from 80 to 74 denoting deluding the patient and fortunately perfusion of the kidney not affected there is very mild ascites here fortunately patient was accepted in cardiac surgeon center very early and this is very good news because the surgical interference with this huge myxoma, which definitely can affect the liver by making hypoperfusion and at the same time making liver congestion because really there is huge <coughs> right side with stracasmic regurgitation. I believe for this case, it is a rare case, it's not a common scenario, but you can face this scenario with other cases where echocardiology alone cannot solve the problem and you need critical care echo and thank you for watching and i'm so happy to meet you in this project we see you in another project bye bye